I just went on the camera that the speaker's broken. And then I came on here to redo the video and I just took a picture of myself instead of, you know, I love Mercury retrogrades. They're so fun. Okay, what I wanted to go over, just real quick, guys. Um, this is not bullshit. It's not an excuse. It's not a scam. This is the truth with spellcasting. When, and you guys have heard me say this a million times, you shouldn't be shocked here. When I uh, do your spell work, I go into a very grounded, protected, neutral state so that I, as a human being, can't make any judges or have any opinions on your spell work that might influence it. Um, I don't, there's a phone call. I don't pick up on anything. I don't allow myself to, because if I was to do that, I would have to let your energy through. And once again, I'm working with three or four of you a night, usually three. If I'm real energetic, four, usually three. Um, people a night now during dead zones i might only have one or two of you but still the point is this is all year round uh as you guys know i don't really take off holidays might take off my birthday now and then but other than that or like when chris cornell died or you know things like that um i don't really take days off or nights off um sometimes as you saw when i switched from our fire to my own website there was that period of time where i was like i wasn't getting any orders and i was starting to freak out because <laughs> i do need spell work to help me sleep so i'm not complaining i i, I i'm good with three of you a night i can do three people spell work a night uh one spell per person that's why a lot of times if you ever wondered why i only do one of your spells a night it's to leave room for two other people to come in so i don't get a backlog of people waiting i can you know, it, it's better if you order five spells at once for me to say, okay, it's going to take me five nights. Then I can still take in second and third people who might have one spell or a two, you know, two spell night. I can fit in people better. And that leaves me not backlogged. So you're not waiting like a month for me to even start your spell work. Because if I was to take one person a night and do some of your orders, people be waiting for a while and then they're going to go somewhere else and I don't want them to, so... It's just fair if I do. Now, if it is a dead time and I can sneak in two of your spells in one night, sometimes I will. But usually I still plan it as one spell a night. And then if I get lucky and I don't get any other orders or something, then I might go ahead. Or I might enjoy myself and just go on to bed. You know, <laughs> it just depends on the mood I'm in. But normally, one spell per night, per person. If you order seven at one time, that's fine. But it's going to be seven nights, okay? But I'm going to start the night I get the order. And I know <laughs> recently my email checking. <laughs> it could, guys, just give up. I'm never going to be that on top of emails, okay? I, I do my best, but there was a couple times the past couple of months, I admit, it got a little crazy. But remember, we are in a pandemic. I am a mom. I have a real job. Uh, <laughs> you know, we <laughs> just... <laughs> Just bear with me. That's how you know I'm real. It's because I screw up sometimes. And only the real do. Um, but anyways, some of you, and I, I just want to say I understand this. Never take this as coldness. I've gone over this topic before, but every once in a while I have to re-go over it as new people come in and maybe they haven't seen the older videos. Once again, guys, some of you really like to talk. And I get it. Um, I do. I get it. And especially because you might be getting spell work on a situation you can't talk to other people about. You can't even tell your best friend. So you come to me and you vet and you tell me every detail of every second of your conversation with this person and blah, blah, blah. Okay, guys, I'm not saying don't do that. Go ahead and do it. It doesn't bother me that you guys do it. But understand when I don't respond to it or I say something like, I have to stay detached. I'm not being an asshole. I'm not trying to be an asshole. I have to stay detached. Um, I just do. And I can't read every detail of your every moment of your conversation with, you know, that person. But I understand you don't have anybody else to tell and you want to talk about it. So go ahead. Write that five-page email. I may not read every word of it. I might come back later and read it 
when the spell work has done its thing and I don't have to be attached. Believe it or not, I have done that sometimes. Um, especially if I have to refresh myself on a situation or something, I might go back and actually, what was this person? Where are we? Yeah. <laughs> but at the moment when I'm doing your spell work or shortly after, for at least a few months after, I really can't get that attached to your situation and I can't read every word. It, number one, it can make me sick. It can give me migraines. It, um, sometimes it's like the universe just fuzzes words out. Um, it's almost like the universe is protecting me from getting attached to your situation so that I can continue to help you with spell work. Because what's happened in the past, when I first started doing this, at least online especially, but even with friends locally, this has also happened, the more I know you, and the more uh, attached I get to you as a person, sometimes my spell work can start sucking. It's not as successful. Um, I do best with people that just kind of come in every now and then and say, Jess, I need you for this and this and this. I'm like, what's up? Cool. And, you know, we're friendly. We like each other. But I don't know too many details of their lives. And I don't even know that many details of the spell work that I'm doing. I actually work best with the least amount of details. I don't need to know the whole story. I need to know what I need to know to do the spell work. And anything you think is absolutely important to that spell work does help me. Uh, if you're gay and doing a, a love spell on a straight person, I need to know that. I'm not going to judge it, but I need to give you a warning on that. I um, need to remind you about self-will, things like that. Um, if you're, if it's a really complicated situation and that other person's self-will is really, really stubborn or you know, then, yeah, I need to kind of give you some therapy on you don't want to force this person to be somebody they're not, you know, and I don't mean just gay or straight that can go a million different ways. Or, you know, this person might be in this other relationship because of their attachment to money, not because they don't care about you. I, I do need to say some of that to you guys to make you guys realize love is love is wonderful, but not everybody is motivated by love. Some people are motivated by money. Some people are motivated by comfort. Some people are motivated by stability, security. Um, that kind of the therapy, psychological aspect of it sometimes I, I do need to say that to you but actually when I first start the spell work it's better if I don't even know any of that really and then if the spell work doesn't fail then we can come in and discuss okay so this person's still saying they have feelings for you and I'm I'm feeling that and I'm I'm, I'm agreeing but what's 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 the ro what's the roadblock what's the the block uh does this other person they're with make a shitload of money? Uh, do they offer security? Do they have a house and children with this person that this person might love more than romantic love or sex with you? Let's figure this out. Um, and some, some of those types of situations, there's not a damn thing you can do. You just got to let go and move on to somebody else that is meant for you. Because all it is is that person wasn't meant for you. But don't give up. I mean, always give it a shot. But I'm just saying, if it's not working, there's a reason it's not working. There just is. But I can't sit and read every detail of every conversation. I would, I'm already blind, but I would go even more blind and insane and end up, like I just told somebody, end up in a loony bin doing knitting instead of your spell work. So, uh, I can't absorb all of your energies every night while I'm doing your work. I can't. So no, I don't do big app reports. I let you know my house did not burn down and my cats did not sit on the candle and I have survived your spell work and nothing really freaky happened. The candle didn't explode. You know, a demon didn't come running through the room or anything. You know, when I say all went well, it means no news is good news. Uh, nothing really dramatic happened and that's a good thing. You, you really don't want anything dramatic happening during your spell work. Because that's not always a good thing. So, and it rarely happens. Thank God, otherwise I still wouldn't still be doing this. <laughs> Every once in a while, my cat will try to sit on a candle. But that is not your fault. It has nothing to do with your spell work. That's my cat. Especially in winter. She, just, she's cold. <laughs> and she ain't real bright. She's bright, but not when it comes to candles. 
Anyways, <laughs> even I sometimes aren't quite um, <laughs> that bright when I'm working with candles. I have made some boo-boos. I have candle wax on my carpet to prove it. But anyways, <laughs> when I say all went well, it means it was completed. It was done. Nothing extreme happened. Nothing worried me. Uh, it's fine. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be 100% successful. Your target self-will is the judge of that. Your common sense and choosing a spell, all that, like I said, and your ability to let go afterwards and not obsess or overthink are the biggest predictors of how successful your spell will be. I just don't need to make it better or worse. I, I just need to stay out of it after I've done it. You know, I have to do it in my own spell work. And trust me, it's hard. I'll be sitting there. I screw up like you guys. I, I'll get some money and forget to do a money spell when I have money in my purse. And I'll wait till my purse is empty and then I'll go do a money spell. I do it too, guys. I'm human. Just like you. But I'm telling you, I'm trying to learn to walk my walk or walk my talk. Um, I'm getting a little better at it, but I still screw up. Uh, I'm not being rude when I say, you know, I've got to detach or I just don't answer you and I just let you ramble. I, I've just started doing that, you know, because I feel like I've done enough videos on this topic. <laughs> and most of you come from YouTube. So I feel like, you know, like when I just go quiet, it's not that I'm not listening. It's just. I'm not enabling you. I'm sorry. I'm not going to ruin your spell work by sitting and reading all that and getting too attached to you because I, I, it, it's a true story. It's happened in my life. I have had clients I got very attached to. Um, we got to be friends. I have very attached, not in a romantic way, but just, you know, attached to their lives and and some of their spells weren't work and I get frustrated they weren't working with them and, you know, figure it out and let's figure this out. And if I get too super involved like that i just noticed over the years the success rate of the spells will start to suck and it breaks my heart it does because some of you i actually really enjoy and it sucks that i can't be closer to you but unfortunately the closer i am to somebody the less successful the spell so i have to keep that little bit of detachment i just do i I don't know why. I wish I could explain that to you. I think it has to do with anxiety. I have an anxiety disorder. So maybe when I get attached to my clients, my anxious energy interferes with that spell. I am not sure. Um, that's my best guess. Uh, it may be more complex than that. It might be that simple. I'm not sure. Um, but I'm just being honest. So, okay, I think my phone's about to do something weird. This Mercury Retrograde has killed all my electronics, I swear to God. I'm surprised I'm even still here making videos, to be honest. Um, and you wonder why I'm slow on emails. Because nothing's working! <laughs> Nothing! <laughs> and yes, it's fine to do spells in Mercury Retrograde. But Mercury Retrograde has no effect on my spell success rate whatsoever. But it will have an effect on my communication. Like a, yeah. Anyways, love you guys. I love you. I may have to skim your emails and still not reply sometimes or your messages on Facebook or whatever. But I love you and I hear you and I get enough to understand what's going on. And I, the universe has a way to make sure I absorb what I need to absorb. I've noticed it time and time again. When I go back later and reread, I realize I've read the parts I needed to know about. And just the others went fuzzy. Bless the adult detention deficit disorder or something. I don't know. We're connected to a Merc. Well, I actually have brain of Virgo with ADD. Uh, actually, is Mercury who is the communication. And in retrogrades, uh, my emails get slower. Yeah. But anyways, uh, it's all connected. It's all for a reason. It will work uh, if I go silent or don't say much or have to... You're actually pushing so far where I have to go stop, I can't enable. Um, I've tried to stop doing that and just go quiet though, because it seems like you guys get it when I go quiet. Whereas if I come on and say I can't enable you, I, I feel like I might be offending you. So if I just go quiet, <laughs> I can't enable you. 
but it's a nicer way. It seems to be a nicer way to say it because then you'll get, okay, I'll stop, I'll stop talking. Exactly. That's what I needed you to do. Um, cause I couldn't participate in it, but I didn't want to be rude. So that's that. Love you guys.